um, probably when I was about eight or nine. She made all her slip covers, all the pillows, everything in her house. She made all of her clothes. And she was like, if you want a new outfit, you need to learn how to make one. And that's just, that's just how you did it back then. That's just how you did it back then. Pins through the eyes. <laughs> and, and you said this was for, created from your grandma. This was my grandmother's, this is, was my grandmother's pen cushion. How did Sewing Guild come out of all of this? Like, when did it start? Uh... Uh, that's a Boyda question, because <laughs> Boyd is the one that got me involved. Uh, actually, Charlotte Collier said to me uh, when I was getting ready to retire, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, I don't know, I'll probably sit around and sew. And she said, well, you need to meet up with Boyda. Can you tell me, Boyda, uh, who introduced you to sewing? Well, my mom did. I was about age 10, and uh, she wanted me to sew. Worst thing that happened about that time was the time I stuck my finger under the presser foot uh, accidentally, and I did stitch a stitch in my finger. That did not help my wanting to sew. So I backed off for a while and thought it was too dangerous but it didn't last long. And so from 10 on, off and on, I would be sewing at home. Some of the things I've done that uh, probably is not the average sewer was after we were married, uh, I was making clothes for the boys. Always wanted a little girl so I could make fancy dresses. Uh, but God thought it was best I have two boys. So I made, t I made little suits for them. Uh, and as they grow old, grew older, uh, shirts at about the kids were, David was probably about six uh, or seven on the bus to school. Someone said, hey, Dave, your shirt is really neat. And he said, oh, I'll have my mom make you one. She made it for me. My area is arranged by, um, these things are for the baby gowns. Some of this area is also baby gowns, and what isn't then are little girls' dresses. And that takes almost all of this area. Um, box after box after box. You count them if you want to. There's a lot of them. And there's two more over here that are filled with lace and trim. This is the dressmaking corner. Uh, we make dresses for little girls in, in Africa and in Haiti. Uh, many, many dresses have been made in the last few years by Millie Peterson and Nancy Hopkins. Uh, Nancy's been the prime uh, sewer for that, and I'm really appreciative. Girls have moved out, so I take over their closets. There was a house that Todd was painting, and there was a pile of uh, draperies and curtains and stuff that had been pulled down, and I asked the lady what she was going to do with it, and she said, I'm just gonna throw them away, and I said, can I have that? And this is the lace that was on one of the dresses, and then she said, what are you gonna do with it? And so I sent her a picture after I made the dress, and she said, I've got a sewing machine, I've got fabric, what all do you need? And then I met her aunt, who has made beautiful things for us and given us some donations. Remember who gave me this shirt? But you can change shirts into dresses. There was a company in town that went out of business, or they changed names. And these were the dress shirts that the employees wore. And so they couldn't wear them anymore because they had embroidery that said the name of the company. So they gifted me. And again, some of Anna Freeman's antique trims. How many dresses would you say on average that you alone probably make throughout the year? Oh, I'd say I probably make over 400 a year. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of dresses. Plus I make, I finish off probably 200 to 300 of the flannel blankets, I about 200 to 300 pairs of shorts, that's a lot of, that's a lot of shorts. A lot of, a lot of blankets a lot of and shorts. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what you've got here. Uh, when we go to Haiti, t 
typically we take tote bags for them to hand out at the nutrition clinics and because they have to put their plumpy nut they get a nutritional supplement for their children and they have to have it something to carry it in because then they have to bring back the empty containers in order to get new ones the next time they come. We give to every infant uh, small child little knit caps and to the women that are seen by uh, Dr. Kidder and the obstetric team, uh, they are given these darling little reusable diapers with liners and they come with a bag of six of them in there. And for the little boys, we give them out the little matchbox cars and shorts. And for the women, uh, after they have their babies, or for uh, menstruating women, we give them the uh, washable sanitary pads and they get a set of six of those in a bag. The infants all get a blanket when we give them out the tote bags with the diapers and a blanket in it. And then the adorable little onesies that Jan and Elaine make. That's awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> the whole project's awesome. How many people do you think you have working to make? I mean, how many people in Sewing Guild are, are doing this? I know you've got the little list over there, but how many, how many members would you guess are probably part well, of Well, I don't know that they officially think that they're in Sewing <laughs> Guild, but they are um, because uh, we, we're using mo money that's been given to us by the vestry, uh, allocated by the parishioners. And uh, but right now, I think 24, including our latest recruit, Michaela Johnson, that has sewn for her first time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. When I came to Springfield, I wanted to find a group that was doing something similar, uh, to it, hoping that it would be helping a shelter somehow. Uh, well, I first discovered Babies in Need, and that was through um, their coming to Springfield shortly after I uh, had started sewing for Belle Cockrell, who was in charge of a small group of women uh, that were putting blankets for the hospital. Belle had been doing this project of blankets for a long time and as she was getting older it was becoming harder and harder and she was looking for help and I began working with some of the other ladies and that's how I got started. Uh, it soon became obvious that Belle could no longer handle storing the blankets and the fabric uh, and um, I began pushing for a room or a place where we could uh, begin to work together maybe with as a group. The uh, room we have is wonderful and uh, we now share it with the knitters and it has allowed us then to have materials and projects stored there at the church uh, the blanket process has completed because I had made a promise to Belle as she was in her nursing care that I would continue baby tree at Christmas time and always have blankets for the, for the uh, newborns and or take them individually to uh, the hospital. Why do you do all this? Oh, keeps me off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. I love to sew. I love to make things. Um, I just, I just uh, get a big kick out of it. And the first time I went to Haiti, it just grabbed my heart. I mean, I just, I saw that the need there was so great, and that's something I can do. I would sew every minute of the day. Uh, I could not go without three meals a day, but I would have to stop for breaks. But I love sewing so much, and I just get such a thrill of doing stuff for other people. If you are that interested in learning to sew and are willing to give some time, it does take some time, uh, I would meet with anybody who's wanting to learn to sew. And ideally would be to meet at the church and uh, learn these techniques for drawing the patterns and cutting them out. And after that, if we need a sewing machine, there's one there at the church, and we can start there with the machine learning. Hi, I'm Franz. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
uh, we specifically wanted to plug and thank Sewing Guild for our first video like this. Um, since the outbreak of COVID-19, they have produced over 11,000 face masks for area hospitals and different volunteer groups. Uh, I, I have a plethora of thank you notes that have been sent to them. And uh, if you enjoyed this content, let us know. And uh, I hope you learned a few things about Sewing Guild and hope that you will consider either donating to Sewing Guild or like Boyd has said, even joining Sewing Guild. Again, thank you so much for watching. We greatly appreciate you and thank you to our friends in Sewing Guild.